Right, welcome to the totally hmm? awesome fishing show, guys. We've got to say it's a weird one, Alan, isn't it? A weird one. The whole of the world is going. I don't know. I don't know where it's going. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't give you any advice. I really don't know myself. Like you guys, I probably end up going to do that if I'm not going fishing. And the weather's been good as well, that's a weird thing. Now, let's get this straight. For all those people with the brain of half a potato, no, the next film you're about to see, I'm not fishing in the close season. I am not fishing in the lockdown. I have 30 backed up films for you guys to watch. And hopefully I can start cranking stuff up. I've got over 30 now, to be honest, because I'm doing vlogs. Hopefully, you guys, I know you guys appreciate it, but obviously there's one or two in there. You know, what can I say? They're perhaps not on the uh, same page as the rest of us. And they just go, hit that keyboard now. You're wrong. This was held back, especially for a time like this. So I'm going to put a film up for you. But first, wait for this. It's a fishing film. And trust me, there are some fish in it. Right. Can't you mad is shut down doing this lockdown business, honestly. Right, but here, because this gentleman watches all our films, he's... Listen to my wife and daughter. Can I have some quiet, please? I'm filming in here. Sad, isn't it? Lockdown. I can't get away from them. This is a shout-out. Yes, a shout-out. Who for? He's sitting there watching. He's watching the video like that. I watch all the Grand's videos, yeah. A shout out for Ryan Widdicombe. His birthday is on the 2nd of April. The request comes from his brother Joe, who said, Ryan is a passionate fisherman in the Tall Bay area. For those of you who live around the other side of the world, Tall Bay is sort of south, southwest um, part of England. And he goes fishing most nights. God, he must catch a lot of fish. But due to the C19, as I'm calling it, my new nickname for it, I don't want to call it coronavirus, it makes me frightened. Due to the C19, C19 he is unable to go now. <laughs> What's new there? Join the club. He's watching all the TA videos on repeat. Well, excuse me, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm starting to watch them myself now, don't worry. Especially the vintage ones, I like some of those old vintage ones. God, are so good looking in them. Anyway, guys, here's a film for you. It's fresh water. It's something to watch. It's free to watch. And I just hope it gets you guys through, let's say, God, the next hour. It's tough out there, but at least this is one worth watching. It's done with a head cam. It was on a drizzly rainy day. A low pressure system. I absolutely had to go. I knew the fish would bite. By golly, I did okay. Well, I just had to come back to Pondwood, I have to say. A big carp on floaters. I just know there's some big ones knocking around, some really good double-figure fish. And when I look around the lake, everybody but everybody seems to be going for the catfish. Don't get me wrong, I've just literally been here 10 minutes. I've got a piece of lunch of meat up under this tree here, and I've already had a couple of beeps. But everybody's after catfish. Now, this is a midweek session, so it's a bit quieter. But of course, as you can tell by the umbrella and the drips off it, that's right, it's raining. Now I have, how can I put it? I've fished up here before, now I've come this side more because there's loads of rubbish on the surface. And I'm hoping that that's where my bits of float and my bread will stay. Uh, and the longer it stays on the surface, if you drift down there, that's no good. I can't keep moving swims all the time at the, at the uh, discretion of the wind. I can't keep moving around because then I've got my catfish rod to move all the time. I've got lunch of meat on the catfish rod. But my priority is not catfish. Look, it would be a bonus, it would be a bonus. I'm not going to say I don't want to catch a catfish, it would be very nice. But I just got a feeling there's some nice double figure carp here. Um, and they're sort of out in this milling around this area. But, you know, I don't think a lot of people fish for them. I really don't. So I'm rather than freelining using a waggler float there, self-loaded waggler float. I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm on whatever it is, fifth, I think it's 15 pound line, big chunky old line. Well, you need that for the catfish. That's 20 pound on that one. Take no prisoners. So as soon as this rain stops, I'm going to be getting... It's there. Just a second beep I've had on that. 
Now here's the tip, Josh told me, this is Josh the owner, told me a lot of people cast out, don't always cast out, a lot of people go for corners, don't always go for corners. He said they dig out like nests underneath the bank, so he said don't neglect fishing, Ridi ridiculous, I don't need to be sold on margin fishing, you know me. That's there's something beeping around here, boys. There's something beeping around. I'm getting wet, but whatever. Look, 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 look. I've got my finger down here. I feel nothing. It's a very, very, maybe it's a carp. I'm on backwind as well. I'm not fishing with any bait runner. I'm just going to drop it back again there. So I can just, e I can just ease that back like that. I don't want to get the camera wet. It's not a waterproof case. I just want... I'd like to get a decent carp, I have to say, I'd like to get a nice carp, 8, 10, 12, 15 pounds, or bigger, don't get me wrong, and a catfish. What about a carp and a cat in the same session? I have no problem at all fishing in the rain with a big umbrella. This umbrella's about 45 years old, but the problem being, let's find some bread. The problem being, I can't film in it. If I put my under, oh Jesus, oh, I missed him. That's you, it's Smith. That was right, I can't tell you how far under that tree that was. I didn't feel a thing. My goodness, that shot up. So that one messing around there, it could have been a carp, but it was a kachunking great big piece of lunch of meat. There's my bobbin, the old washing up bottle. Top. I saw that in a magazine recently, somebody obviously watches our films, thought, oh, I'm gonna write about using washing up bottle tops, there can't be many of us left. So let me rig this up again and I'll show you. See, this is low pressure. And low pressure, I wonder, should should switch a fish on. So, there's my, are you gonna see this? Yeah, you might be able to see it like that there. Hook, piece of fishing line, goes right through the middle here, and it's held on by a little, I wanna call it a bait stop, so in my case, the bait stop is a twig, and the hook's just there. But don't worry about this piece sticking up that tag end. They go around eating other live fish, so I mean, I'm really not gonna be bothered about a piece of little soft, fluffy line. I'm gonna drop that bout under the tree, and the reason I've gone on that tree root is because that tree is hanging forward slightly. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if there is a bit of an undercut in the bank there, and maybe a catfish is under it. I'm just gonna, I'll show you where I'm going, look. Boys, boys, it's not even a cast. It is not even a cast. It's ridiculous. I might go a little bit further than that, Graham, that really was close. I wanna be about two feet out so they can smell the it. A lot of rubbish to sink the line through here, unfortunately. But that for sure wasn't rubbish on the line. That was that was a catfish take. Who's stolen the who's stolen the bite line? That's not good. On goes the bobbin. Backwind. Come on, rain, pack up, mate, enough of it. Don't... I know the garden needs it. That's it, right there. I'd just like to get enough tension on it. Like that. We're set, we're set. So it appears at the present time, the carp either don't like this little breeze drifting stuff. Oh no, tell a lie. Small fish. No, I have no problem with small fish taking bits of crust like that because I think they're knocking it all the time. Yes, eventually they will knock it off, but they're attracting the attention of the carp. Over in the dark patch, which is a shadow line thrown from the building, I can see there's a bigger carp. But I'll tell you how I came about this. I was fishing at um, Berry Hill Fisheries on their main lake, traditional lake, a state lake, all night fishing. And during the night, I could hear, I chuck, I've thrown a little bit of bread out, but you can't float a fish here in a day because the ducks are driving you crazy and the geese. Uh, so I thought, what can this be? So I kept getting up and there was tiny dimples, tiny dimples I could just see like in, in what was the night sky reflecting on the water. And I thought, well, I'll try, oh, maybe I'll catch a rud or something like that. So I tried a small piece out there, couldn't see where I cast, couldn't see, you know, in the dark. I could just see the, the ring it made. It made a ring, I thought I gave it a tug, boom, off it went. Double figure carp. So that happened about three times. I lost two others, I think, that night and landed two doubles as a bonus to the fish I caught on boilies on the bottom. Now, I would never have caught those carp. 
But I would have, honest to God, I've been fishing 60 years now, I would have honestly thought they were rud. So don't neglect tiny little dimples, because sometimes carp come up almost vertically like this and just nibble away at it, trying to suck it off the hook. They're quite cute. And I think that's what's happened here. And I'm pretty sure, although some of these are small markings that they give in, what I call markings, little rings out there, I'm pretty sure they're carp and decent ones too. And there's some nice old carp in here as well, what I call old carp. Can only give it a go, give it a go. Hopefully this rain stops for me. See, I could float a fish close in here, but the problem is the wind blowing towards me, it's gonna drift it closer and closer down to the bank. If I use a waggler float, I can get more weight to get it out there. And although these fish are picky, they just take the bread underneath the surface. I'm not striking until I see that float go. Now, you won't see this lens is whining, but I'm out there. I've had one come up and bump it off the hook already. So there are carp in there. They could be seven pounders. They could be six, seven pounders. I'm not fussy, but my gut feeling is, from previous experience, some of these little small rings they're making where they're knocking at the bread are not all small fish. I think some are pretty big fish. I've just got to get the system right. I have noticed this carp fishing with floaters a lot. They, I want to say they all come up. Several fish will be on the top at the same time and then they shut down and go down for like five minutes. It's, it's peculiar, you know, it's like they all sort of have a little feed in different areas and they all go down. There's one right there. I might, I never mind bread coming off the hook. Oh, it's noisy here with the uh, Right under the float flight path, I think, of Heathrow. So just a piece of crust. I just dip it once, just enough like that, it gives it a bit of soaking, and I'm looking for the dimples. If I had polarizing glasses, I'd probably be able to see the fish. And I'm going to retreat back under here. Oh, there's one, look, shoveling it down over there. It's just annoying with this rain, I could end up Oh, I think one's coming towards me. I mean, my way of fishing generally would be just nothing on there. No shot. I've got a BB holding that float as well in position. A BB and a self-writing float. I would generally just have a hook on there. I would have nothing else. I like free line, but of course I'm restricted to casting distance then. And I need to visually see them shut their mouth over the hook. Which when it's sort of between glary and dark here, you know, I have to use the float as an indication. Oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, I'm on, I'm on, boys. <laughs> I'm on. Oh, you would have got that one on camera. He took it, the bread disappeared, but I waited until I actually saw the float go. Well, that was sweet, wasn't it, boys? I don't think this is a five pounder. I may be wrong, I may be totally wrong. I may be wrong, and he may ping off. I just had a float for you. The waggler float, I think, is a way to go. That's a decent, decent sort of looking. I'm going to come up here, away from a catfish line. That's a common, maybe he is about the seven mark. Oh, he went right in the net. What a bad mistake he made then. So there you go, people. Common carp from Pondwood. That's a great look, isn't it? That is a nice looking carp. Wow, if I could get a catfish to go with that, I'd be pleased. Gone. <laughs> There's a result in every totally awesome packet. Always go with your gut feelings. My gut feeling was come back to the Pombwood Main Lake. That was always, always on the cards for me. So there's the rig, guys. How basic is that? A waggler float, a shot there, 15 inches, piece of floating crust. Wait for a carp to show, and then uh, cast it off the hook. Okay, okay, it happens. You can use a big piece, or you can use a small piece. I don't really think it makes any difference, because eventually all those small nibbling fish will, will take them off the hook. Here we go. There's fish moving in amongst those leaves out there. Okay. Now, with that glare on the water, I can't possibly see the bait totally go. So I'm banking on the float disappearing. Oh, I know, I know I missed it. I know I missed it. 
Then you see what I mean? They've gone quiet now. I don't understand that. There's one smallish one there. There's two together. We we'll try them. Right on their heads. My flow, you guys, if I hold the camera dead still, is just there and over to the right, just to the right of that swell, is my bread. But even if they swirl around the bread, I'm not striking until I see that float go under. Yeah, look, 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 small fish around it. Small fish around it to the right. You cannot afford to take your eyes off it. And there's those tiny rings out there, you might be able to see them on this camera. They are carp, trust me. And a lot of small fish in there, probably three or four inch rod or roach or something like that. There was one, that was a much more confident take out there. We might get two casts out of this. Oh, look at this one down there. Why did I move? Why did I move? What's the matter with you, Graham? Oh, it's one that's pretty close to me. Pretty close. Another thing is if they come up against your breadless, you know, your here he goes, here he goes. If the crust comes up against a leaf, I don't mind because they're going to come and suck it away from the leaf. They're going to take it off the side of the leaf. It's fish all over moving out there. I think I just need to be a bit further out. I've got small fish knocking it at the moment. Ironically, the piece of bread down here I just pulled off the hook when I wound in. <laughs> oh, I missed one. Has been taken by another car, the freebie. Ordinarily, I'd be using polarising glasses going to see where, which way they're cruising. But I can't at the moment. Oh, I've got a twig on, a twig on. There's two fish over there. If I go between the two of them, no, it's going to come off the hook. OK, I'm going to let that one sit. That bread is wet, slightly, slightly sunk. So totally dependent on the float. One's just bumped it. I feel another one's going to come back. It's quite a heavy line to be using on my hook. Uh, you can obviously see it, you know, there's no question you can see it. A tinned cottage loaf is the best for this, boys. Not just regular sliced, because once I get through the crust of this, I'm going to have to uh, start on the edges, which is not so good, and it definitely will be close range. Oh, right, I just see a fish. I actually physically saw the fish outside as a carp. Not a big one. I think he's still over to the right. He's munching his way through some leaves. Let me move this way a bit. Actually, I can see a bit more here. I've got more shadow line down there. Here he comes. 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 Nibbling at it, sucking at it. He knows there's a hook in there somewhere. Oh, he's really fiddling with it. Watch the float. Got him. Boy, it's cold. You must have got that on camera. You must have got that on camera. I don't think it's a big one again. I'm just sure there's some bigger ones further out there. Oh, I'm not bothered. Fish, oh, oh Jesus. I just lost a catfish, boys. <laughs> I just lost a catfish. I wonder what, I wonder whose buzzer is going off there. <laughs> what a flaming nuisance. Flaming is the politest word I use on camera today. Same size fish, I guess. Mirror this time. Right, up we come, boysy. That waggler float method is pretty deadly. See, I don't like using those great big controller floats. They, they put things on the sides of beer bottles and that. I don't like using those. If you go for like the matchman's techniques, I think you'll find it's a lot better and you'll probably catch more fish. We got him. When he comes, come to Uncle Graham. I can't believe we lost that catfish on the other rod as well. Wouldn't that have been something? I've never had a cat and a carp at the same time. I've never had that cat and a carp hooked up at the same time. There he is, nice mirror carp. Wow, two fish. I knew to come today. I just had a feeling that pressure, low pressure might be doing it. 
there's another hairy piece of lunch to make you see the theory that I had about that overhanging tree you see it's slightly inclined so I feel the roots underneath just uh, there's a bit of rubbish here I don't like the bit of rubbish I'll stop it sinking properly that's one fish lost another one definitely definitely catfish I heard this beeping noise I thought whose buzzer's going somebody must have a run somewhere oh why is my why is my reel handle turning around Well, let's hope we do get lucky. I'd like to get a, a, car, a catfish today if I could. A double figure carp and a cat of any description. That would be nice. Waggler float, bread. Been a big swirl just down in front of me. I could just see, I'm gonna call on counter ripples. He's still there. He is still there. I'm gonna try one a bit closer. Fish over on the right there. Got about two or three. Once you're under the surface in that clear, I can't see. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Let's see if he's. See if he's. Oh, he's close. He's close. Man, he's close. Not the float. Here he goes. No. See the float didn't move. I could have struck. I'd have. Oh. What the. F what the. F what's this? What's this going on here? What's all that about? Striking the reel falls off. Is that some new technique? No, it's where I'm pulling on a totally awesome fishing show. I think that was a bigger carp. I've lost my BB. i <laughs> have to watch this. Reels falling off everywhere. I feel another carp coming, people. I can't tell you. I cannot get out there fast enough. I don't think anybody's fishing for these fish. I really don't. Come on, come on, come on. BB. 68 years old. I'm still getting the shakes. With us. If I lose that, I'm in the coffin, I can tell you. <laughs> it's just always been the same. When you have hard fishing, not some sucker easy fishing, but you have some hard fishing, you do appreciate it when you suddenly get it all right together. Now, if I could just get a bit better light here and be able to see the fish. Let's go long distance. Okay. Well, it's so long distance I can't see the bloody float. Oh yeah. No, it's not me, it's the other guy. Where's my float? I got it. So I'll just let that sit for a second. There's three fish that I know. There's three different dim dimples way out there in the distance. You guys won't see the float. I'm in the zone. It's physically seen two fish close in down here. Uh, he's, got, I'm, I'm, he's swimming quite fast. Now the bread's off. Great. Maybe he'll turn around. Bread in the pocket. Just had a little bit better light. Maybe I should have bought my Polaroids in glasses. It might sound a bit daft. I don't actually like striking across to my right. I'd sooner stand sort of here and strike to my left. Now there's a fish swirled around my bait. I either spat it out or left it, but I actually think he knows that's there and will return to it. That's my theory. Certainly worth leaving there for a while. He's right by it. I knew he'd come back. Got one, boys. Well, is he a bigger one? Feels a tad bigger. And I had a beep on that uh, catfish rod. Oh, he's way up. This could be a better fish. Could be. Oh no, a piece of piece of stick out there. I don't need that. Now this feels. No, that feels a bit bigger. This one. Oh yeah, he's a bit bigger. He feels a bit bigger to me.
There's a bit of fishing line hanging up there, boys. Up there by my rod tip, it's not mine, I hate to add. I try to avoid casting into trees as much as possible nowadays. This could be, could be a nice fish. I think I'd better take my time with this one, people. I'm also watching that catfish work and standing one step nearer. Now this one's this one's not six pounds. I'm pretty sure. I may be wrong. He's not a six or seven pounder. He's got that funny juddery kicky bit about it, like he might be foul hooked though. If you get one that swirls and splashes of the bait and gets foul hooked in the tail, it gives that sort of fight. He goes do 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 backs and forwards. It's, it's strange. I don't seem to be making much headway on this one. I think this might be fouled somehow. It's too much power. It's either big fish or, well it's not that big, I can tell by the rushes, but it's rushing away all the time. Just constant even pressure. I'm going to put my money on this being foul. There you go. See if, I, see if I'm right. Generally, they just ping off after a while. Much, much harder catching a fish that's fouled on there somewhere because he's got all the action he can use. Every direction he wants to go and he goes. I'm going to ping off till I get closer. There is foul, guys. You can generally tell after a few years of doing it the fight of all the different fish. And there's just way too much power in this. It's a mirror. He's obviously slapped, slapped around the bait. And as I've struck, I probably might even have gone to another fish, you never know. He might have gone into a different fish. Come on. He's in. Guys, I'm on a catfish. I don't know if I'm going to get it. Gonna, he's going to try to get me around the tree here. Definitely got catfish on. Peeled a load of line off. I'm going to try and walk him past. He's want to get in this snag. I was just tackling up and I had a real churner. I could really do with him being in the open water. And of course, he wants to get back under that tree stump big time. He wants in there. He's going to snag me up if I ain't careful. I think I might have him out. I might have him out. Wow, that rod's bent. That rod is bent. I'm just going to keep walking him. Oh, man, I'd like to get a catfish out of this as well. That would be something. It is 100% this is a catfish. I've got a lot of drag on there. A lot of drag. So the batteries hold out on the camera. That's on a tiny piece of luncheon meat. I mean, like almost double boily size. I just left it on there. Oh my word, what a fight on an even rod. Heavy line. All the Nambies out there, don't worry, I'm on 20 pound line. But look at the sport I'm getting out. I don't want those great big catfish poles, don't need them. Great big pit reels and all that. This reel's about, I don't know, 35, 40 years old. Oh no, don't go in the snag. You just keep kicking away there, pal. I don't think this is a small fish. I don't think this is a small one. This could be eight, 10 pounds. Mind you, catfish and carp are two totally different animals. Slugs, as they're known, they call the carp jokingly mud pigs. Well, they are mud pigs, they dig around. And the catfish they call slugs because they sort of look like slugs, don't they? Tell you what, they don't fight like slugs, that's for sure. I'd like to get one just to show you people. I had that hunch after I did that floater session. I thought, do you know what? If I could get a low pressure, weather pressure, a little bit of drizzle. Wowee! That's a big tail. I could get a nice bit of low weather, low pressure. Oh yeah, he's okay. He'll do all day long. I feel I'm getting near the end of my battery. 
Well, 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 what a hunch. Always go with your hunches, people. My hunch is I need to get this kitty in the net. There he is. There he is. No, you don't want to know yet. Well, people, I had to change camera batteries. I've actually got him in the net. Let's get my float rod out of the way because I'm getting in a bit of a mess. We've got carp and catfish into one session. Let's see if I can get this out for you. Is he in there? He is indeed in there. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. A nice looking cat. Big catfish with his whiskers there. You've got to come to Pondwood, they've got loads of cats in here. And it appears they've got loads of carp as well, because I've done okay. That's a nice fish. I'll do my best to hold him, but it's not going to be too pretty. That's a nice fish, though. Eh? Let's get it back, boys. Now I'm covered in it. I've got to put the camera on my head. And that's covered in slime. I think you'll agree that was a much, much harder fight than you'd have ever had for a carp that size. I'm guessing you go, just, will he go shy of doubles? Oh no, I think he's a double. Wow, look at that. 12-14. 12-14. Do you know what? I didn't think he was that big. Back he goes. Gone. Wow. What a result. Three carp and a catfish. I've been a couple of hours yet. So there's my bait again, look. Piece of luncheon meat. Got it round the tip actually. I'm gonna go right down by that tree. Just where Josh said. They come out from the edge of the bank, he says. Barely tighten up to it. And another thing, when I was here once before, I saw a guy catch seven cats, I think it was. Five, no, he had seven, seven hookups and he landed five. And I was watching him, he's about two swims away from me. Fishing in the corners, what they call the corners. But he didn't strike until the rod was pulled round, which was sort of news to me. And that's pretty well what happened then, to be honest, in fairness. I'm not gonna say I was a lightning, lightning strike on it. He was pretty well on. Now, what was I doing? That's a hook bait. It's got to be worth getting wet for this, people, and it? it's got to be worth getting wet for. I can see that carp over there. Get out there. Oh, man, I'm nearly on the money with that one. I see the carp under the surface. That might be a big one. I'm going to have to go with a new piece of bread. Free carp and a cat, eh? I'm only here for the afternoon. Well, afternoon, what time did I get here? Two o'clock? Not exactly. An... Oh, there he is. That should be on the money. That's on the money. That's on the money. Watch a float. Watch a float. Watch a float. Watch a float. Oh my god. I think he's took the bait off. That was a good sized carp as well. I'm on. I'm on again. I actually saw the uh, mouth close around the bread that time. He was a lot closer. I think it's a bigger fish. It might be a bit bigger fish. Now I'm gonna up my game to a double figure cat, which I've got, and a double figure carp. And this is all from just notif noticing the fact that nobody is carp fishing. So I figured, hang on a minute, why fish with two catfish rods? Why don't I leave one catfish rod in the right spot and just carp fish and see if I can get some carp out. All good scrappers as well. What a session, what a session. Let's have a look at this one. Now you can see that wagon float. I love seeing a float cut through the water like that. When it comes up just there, I love seeing that. It reminds me of barbell fishing years ago when I used to go 
wading and you catch marble virtually under your feet and see the float rip away. I mean, it's, well, it's not really done much nowadays, is it? Face it, it's everything's ledgered now. Idiot proof ledgering. Just rod folds over. I do it, don't get me wrong, I do it as well. But if I had a choice, I'd sooner catch one barbel with a float and an even rod than I would um, three or four on a ledger. And they said double figures, of course. Uh, which I think this fishy might, might, might get there as. I'm going to bing it off, boys, and show you it in the net because I am low on battery. I'll switch it back on because this fish looks like it might just, just about shade double figures. And that would be my realigned target for the session. Bloody hell, he's fighting this one. Look at the bend in that rod. He just does not want to give in, does he? But then he's met his adversary because neither do I. That's very close to the double. He's in. Let's take a look at him. I may have got the estimate wrong. I think not. I think not, boys. What do you think? I reckon he's very, very close. Somewhere between 10 and a half and 11. Wow. Well, 12, 14. Bigger than I thought, but it was a double. So I've done, I've done the double, boys. 12, 14. Yeah, he slides away. What a session. Double figure carp. Double, 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 double gigged. <laughs> Can't even speak properly. A double figure carp and a double figure catfish. Same session. Same swim, standing in the same swim. And it's not over yet. It's that I feel the low pressure. I think I'm gonna have a flask of tea. Well, I'm not gonna have a flask, I'm gonna drink some tea. Otherwise, I'll be using that secret catfish tree to hide behind and do something else. Drink too much tea. What I'm gonna do, I'll take the head cam off and I've got my camera spiked on an extendable roller painter's brush, decorator's brush, and a rubber rest lashed on the end of it with some duct tape and fishing line. And it might give you a different angle. I can keep my hands free. I've only got the length of this umbilical microphone and I've raised the umbrella up high because the wind's not too bad. I might be able to just set it at an angle so I can fish and you can see me fishing. You might get the hook up, who knows? Obviously, I've missed a few, spooked a few, and I've got four. So the carp, it's not an endless procession of carp. You have to you know, wait till they settle down. Lunch of meat is half left over from another trip. Got it out of the freezer. So don't throw your bay away, guys. I freeze mine down and use it again. I cut the rough bits off it. You know the sort of, I'm gonna call it the dead bits. <laughs> I cut all the dead bits off the lunch of meat, the skin as it were, so it's fresh meat underneath. It's fine. I'll tell you what, boys, I feel another catfish coming. I definitely feel another carp coming. He's got a single toner if he can ever get out of bed. He's missed it. I'm not surprised, pal. Bloody hell. He's sleeping the bivvy. What do you, how long do you think these fish are going to stay on for? They're not, they're stupid, but they're not that stupid, are they? Right, let's see if I can get you a camera angle here. Okay, people, I've got that camera set up. I'm gonna go outside to the length of this lead. I'm gonna soak myself here. I can just see the float. I could do with stand, it's a double figure fish out there, but I tell by the swirl. Now I'm gonna have to stand up can't see the uh, I can't see the bait and I can't see the float otherwise I need the float in a dark area there we go it's the best I can get for you 12 pound one boys that's two doubles and a double figure catfish 12 one boys I've got another catfish I've had eight carp Fucking hell. 
think I got it out of the snags. It's around by the tree. This is a. Uh, I think I got it in the open water now. So I'm on eight carp, and the lads opposite have unfortunately seen I'm using bread there on the top as well, catching. So it's thinned the carp out a bit. Quite pleased to get another catfish hooked up there. Come on, babe, you can do it. Yeah, then he's quite as big as the last one, but he's a catfish. Oh, yes, it's in now, oh, my God. What a trip. <laughs> there we go. Another pondwood catfish. I think he's as big as the other one. Won't quite go doubles. He might go nine and a bit, something like that. But a good fish, eh? There's eight carp, two catfish, and there's still daylight left. Let's get it back. Number 10's on, boys. No idea, I've lost two others um, that just pinged off. This one is digging and digging and digging, and no more catfish. If I get this one in, not a big fish, they're very, very picky. I must have gone at least an hour before I've uh, got another carp. You think in the evening they'd be going mad, but because you know the other people over the other side are all using bread now, so it's, it's stretched the fish out a bit more. I had them right in front of me feeding, lovely. But there you go. This is a small one, I'll just net this one and uh, might get that last cast in. Number 10's on, boys. No idea, I've lost two others um, that just pinged off. This one is digging and digging and digging. And no more catfish. If I get this one in, not a big fish. They're very, very picky. I must have gone at least an hour before I've uh, got another carp. You think in the evening they'd be going mad. But because you know the other people over the other side are all using bread now, so it's, it's stretched the fish out a bit more. I had them right in front of me feeding, lovely. But there you go. This is a small one. I'll just net this one and uh, might get that last cast in. Now listen, I just netted that fish. I didn't film it because it's quite a, you know, I don't know, one of these small ones. But it got worse, guys. I was going to pack up, wasn't I? I didn't. I kept going and going and going. I still caught more fish. Sorry about that. Carp number 14, people want you to get home. So a nice comment to finish up with. Let's get this one back. We'll see you next time on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button on our show and TA Outdoors as well, Mike's one. I'll tell you what, Mike should come on this one, shouldn't he? I've got to pack up, really got to pack up. Well, there you go, guys. I know it was a film from my files, but I've held it back. Thank goodness I did, because it looks like there will be no more new fishing films for the foreseeable future. Who knows? I'm guessing, from the time I put this film up, three to four months, it seems minimum before they... Minimum before... God, good job I've got a sense of humour. Thank God I've left something. I've got a bit of a sense of humour, I must admit. It's about the only thing that keeps me going. That's about all we've got to watch are my file films. I have plenty of full on hardcore, no, no, not that type of, hardcore fishing films. So don't leave us. It'll be like this little montage on the closeout. Hopefully plenty of fish, plenty of tips. Thanks for watching the TA show. And by the way, guys, hit the subscribe button. And for those of you, if you enjoyed this, 
why not copy and paste it to an email and share it with a friend? All you do is go on the link of YouTube and there's that gobbledygook at the top, the link thing. Copy that, put it in your email, paste, it comes up. If you think it might cheer another fisherman up or somebody who just needs to watch something different, it's brand new, nobody's seen this footage before, it's a new film, copy and paste it to them. Why not indeed? Share it around the world, I don't care who watches it. Guys, we'll see you next time, trust me, hopefully next Friday. Another film, hmm, I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of advice back from you guys that you need a bit more help out there. So, I'm going to try, try and put a film up tomorrow and Sunday as well. I might do three in a row, so if you do have that notification bell, don't forget, whatever it does, I don't even have one myself. Ding dong, whatever it does, there will be another film up. It might be gardening, DIY, vlogging, work around the house. I'm trapped, I'm like you guys, I have nowhere to go. I'm just trying to make a bit of footage that might pass an hour or two for you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.